Welcome back, you are watching Sliced Lime, and this is our beginner commands tutorial series. Last time we learned how to make our own spawner, or summon things on command into the world using the slash summon command. I also mentioned how there are four major building blocks of knowledge left to learn before we can graduate our command block school. Today we'll be learning the first of those building blocks, the slash execute command. We have learned how to use relative coordinates to specify commands relative to the place where the commands are executed. We have also learned how to select entities or players in the world using command target selectors. The execute command is the perfect way to combine these to create a very powerful effect. Remember how in the very first episode we learned how to set a block. I can do slash set block and use relative coordinates to place a block just beneath my feet. Let's for instance set the block underneath my feet to be a quartz block. Now I have a quartz block underneath my feet. I can run this command anywhere and it will replace whatever is beneath me with a quartz block. However, if I were to place this command into a command block, set block, relative one down on the y-axis, quartz block. It will no longer do the same. If I click this, I will not see any difference except block placed in the chat output. This is because it's the block beneath the command block that got replaced, rather than the block beneath me. This makes sense. In a multiplayer setting, there's no way for a command block to know which player would like to set a block somewhere. So, the command is executed for the command block itself, instead of for a player. However, the execute command is a way to switch which entity is considered to be executing a command. This sounds complicated, but is in reality fairly simple. As always, if we're trying to learn how to use a command, let's type it into our chat window. Slash execute. Usage. Slash execute entity xyz command or execute entity xyz detect xyz block data command. That's a lot of stuff. Let's focus on the first version of slash execute. Slash execute entity xyz command. That's not so bad. We'll leave the second form to later in the series. Let's try out the first version. Execute and an entity. Remember how a command target selector can be used to replace an entity name. So let's try that. We'll use at p, which means the nearest player. Now where do we want to execute this command? Well, we want to execute the command exactly where that player is. So we'll input relative coordinates that mean exactly where that player is. Which means no numbers, just tilde characters. And then a command. But we already had a command, this setblock command. So that is actually all we need. Now, if I do this, I can press this button and I get a quartz block underneath my feet, wherever I go. You also see that the chat log now no longer says at for who executes the command, but actually my name. Now I am considered to be placing the blocks rather than the command block. Of course I could add this to a clock, the same as we did last time, and now I would regularly be setting quartz block as a path underneath my feet. We could of course use any command as the command after execute. For instance, instead of setting blocks we could be filling blocks or cloning blocks, or even summoning entities. That is already a very powerful command, but we can make it even more powerful by using it as a conditional command. The key to doing that is changing this at p with target selector arguments. We do that by adding square brackets after it and whatever we require as arguments within them. For instance, we could say that this only applies to a target within a radius of 10 blocks. Let's quickly build up the clock we had from last time to show how this could work. Now I'm setting quartz block wherever I walk, with a small bit of delay. 
Of course, the quicker we make this clock, the quicker we can make these blocks appear. This, as it turns out, is key to making command blocks that work without gaps like this one. In a future tutorial, we'll be looking at how to make very, very fast clocks using command blocks. But for now, we'll leave it with this. Now, I am not getting quartz blocks underneath my feet, but as I walk closer to the command block, I will start to get blocks placed again. Of course, any target selector could be used here. So for instance, you could make a machine that sets a block underneath a player only if that player has a certain experience level, or is on a certain team, or within a certain area. One of the most powerful selectors is scoreboards, which we'll also be covering in a future tutorial. I mentioned before that the command after an execute command could be any command. This of course includes a second execute command. Doing things this way increases the power of execute to the point where older commands like test4 are no longer used. If you read web pages or forums about command blocks, you will see many questions and posts about the test4 command. It was introduced in Minecraft 1.7 and used heavily in command block contraptions back then. However, because of the versatility and power of the execute command, you no longer need test4 at all. So how can we use execute to test for certain conditions on certain players? Well. If we add a string of execute commands with different requirements, the last command in the chain will only execute if all those requirements were true. For instance, we could start by saying I want all entities within a radius of 10, that is of type equals item. For all of those entities, I'm going to run a command that says execute for the closest player at their position summon a snowball. This is not going to be doing anything at the moment, but if I have an item nearby, I'm going to get snowballs falling from the sky. This will keep happening as long as there is an item around. This can in fact be used to construct a command that represents almost any condition in the game especially when combined with fast clocks and advanced scoreboard commands. This is why the slash execute command is such an important command in our toolbox. The second form of the execute command, execute detect, can be used to execute only if a block of a certain type is at a certain position relative to that player or entity. This is useful for instance when you want an invention that works a certain way when a player is standing on a certain material. However, it is much less useful than the simple form of the execute command. So today we have learned how to use the execute command to test for conditions and to make things happen at the position of an entity or player in the world. Next time we will look at how to combine this with a super fast clock made using commands. If you have any questions or need any help, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below. That was all for this time. Good luck with your command blocks, and I will see you next time.